Final predictions for Game of Thrones Season 8. We're going to break this down into three sections. The War for the Dawn, the Game of Thrones, and the Aftermath. But real quick, here are 15 predictions that I'm not going to be addressing in this analysis. 4, 8, 12, 15. All right, let's hope for a gnarly cold open. Theon, attempting to save Yara. I first see Theon surviving, but I think he's going to either accidentally kill Yara, just like he almost did to Bran back in the day, or intentionally kill her as a mercy. Either way, Yura and Yara are going down. Euron representing the sea in Miriam Esdor's prophecy. When will he be as he was? When the seas go dry, when the mountains blow in the wind, like leaves. But Theon's going to survive the story, albeit broken, physically and emotionally. Poor dude. We'll find out that the Night King is, in fact, the former 13th Lord Commander, the Night's King of history and lore. He used to rule the Night Fort, the first four in the wall, so if he decides to set up shop there, then Dollar is at his dunzo, cause Castle Black's on the way to the Night Fort. It will be wild and tragic if we see John or Sam face off against a white, Dollar said. I do think that we're going to see white Hodor and white Summer, but I do not think that we're going to see Benjen, Jock, and her Littlefinger again. And I do not think that we're going to see a white Dollar said because I think the Night King's just going to head straight for Winterfell. So Dollar said survives. The reason I think that the Night King's going to go straight to Winterfell is because I still believe that the Night King is the bastard child of Bale the Bard and the Rose of Winterfell, a bastard named Jon Snow, born in the crypt of Winterfell. And the Night King has beef with the Starks, or rather, he has beef with their ancestors, because if I'm right, his half-brother, Bran the Breaker, Bran and Stark, betrayed him at the Night Fort, breaking guest right, killing his wife, Danny Flynn, and their children, then banning his name, erasing his records, and making up a story about how he took down a White Walker Night King, when really, the dude was just a human, his half-brother. This is Bran's purpose in Season 8, to figure out who the others are, where they come from, and what they want. Truths the first men knew, forgotten now in Winterfell. Forgotten now in Winterfell because, in the same cover-up, the Starks chose not to include the Bale the Bard story in the Winterfell Chronicles. Shady, shady dudes. Gilly's insight about C will have a payoff in terms of the Azor High prophecy, which actually refers to an S-O-N son, not an S-U-N son. The long night was a lot. Bran has always wanted to be a knight. Well, back in the day, Lewin once told Bran that maesters are knights of the mind. And as a green seer, Bran is like a knight of the mind on steroids. He's got info galore. But I don't foresee a telepathic battle and he's not going to warg a dragon. Flying means screen sight, flying through space and time. So Bran's purpose is to uncover the truth about the Night King, because the Night King is the North, and the North remembers. The Night King is pissed, so he's going to head to Winterfell, and guess what lies in his path from East Watch by the Sea to Winterfell? The Last Hearth. Sorry, Ned Umba, you're going down, but I do think that Alice Karstark survives this song. Meanwhile, Jaime Lannister will be traveling north to Winterfell, Jamie's going to get Ned Stark's bones from Helen Reed, but he's going to do it off screen and he'll return them to Winterfell, so that's pretty cool, considering Jamie and Ned's heated relationship in the past. Bran and Jamie are going to discuss the push, and Bran's going to be able to see it from Jamie's perspective how King Robert lived above the law, how Jamie was put between a rock and a hard place. So, no harm, no foul. Arya might be pissed, John might be pissed, but Bran's going to understand. Kendry is not going to make any new Valyrian steel because. The spells required to do so have been lost in time, and even if Bran figured it out, my guess is that it requires blood sacrifice, maybe even the sacrifice of babies. If so, that's no bueno, so no new Valyrian steel. Alright, now the Battle of Winterfell. I see a repeat of the 3000 of Cohort happening, meaning the Dothraki die, all of them, they're turned into whites, then they turn around and they charge a line of Unsullied, something like 18 times. There will be many more times as many Dothraki as there are Unsullied, but the Unsullied are going to stand their ground. Most of them are going to die, but I got Grey Worm living, as well as my girl Masande. Ghost and Imeria will both die, thanks to Summer and any other direwolf friends that Summer finds up north. And I also see Arya dying, since it was foreshadowed in her very first chapter. But Arya is the exact same age as Shireen, so I foresee Melisandre getting some redemption by raising Arya from the dead donating her own life fire to raise a child the same age as Shireen. Pretty cool. So Arya will come back to life, and Melisandre, she'll finally pass beyond the wall of death. I expect Robert Glover, Bronn John Royce, Bronn, Tormund, and even his daughter, the Little Bear, to die at the Battle of Winterfell. I expect Jon to ride Rhaegal, and 
It's going to be a battle. I don't expect Danny and John to be able to make a pact with the Night King. I expect a similar scene to the Tower of Joy, where the Night King outclasses John. Think of the Night King as Sir Arthur Dane and John as Ned. Think of Sam the Slayer as the best friend, Helen Reed, who's going to run up and stab the Night King in the back with green dragon glass. This will heal the Night King, and as a result, the entire ice wall will come down. When the ice wall comes down, this will fix that irregularity of the seasons, meaning for the first time in recorded history, they will finally be able to reasonably predict the changing of the seasons, the length of the seasons. All the White Walkers are going to defrost back into humans, and the Whites are going to return to the mud. What about the Night's Watch? Well, since the wall is going to come down, neither Jamie nor Jor are going to become the final Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Unless they realize that the Night's Watch was originally formed as an oath against blood magic, an oath not to breach the Wall of Death, something like that. But in terms of the Night's Watch of the Wall, there's not going to be one. And last but not least, once everything defrosts, I expect Beric to give Jon the kiss of life, dying in the process of raising Jon Snow a second time. Alright, so that's the War for the Dawn. Now let's get back to the Game of Thrones, where they take down Cersei. It's going to be a tragic fall. Danny will accidentally set off some wildfire in King's Landing as she attacks on Drogon, but Jamie will prevent Cersei from blowing up the entire city. Last time, Jamie saved half a million people, and this time, it's going to be a million. Team John and Danny are going to take Cersei into custody, but she's going to demand a trial by combat. She's got a great champion, the Mountain, but check this out, this is pretty cool. Someone like Pod, he's going to remember that they have the option of demanding that the trial be a trial by seven. It's only happened twice before. A trial by seven will sort of even the odds. And this will be especially poetic since trials by seven are related specifically to the faith of the seven. And Cersei and the faith have a pretty heated past. During the trial by seven, the mountain is going to mortally wound his brother, Sandor Clegane. So I don't foresee Sandor giving Sansa the last kiss or the kiss of life, at least not in the show. But as he dies, I do expect Sansa to sing the song. Arya is going to impressively manage to keep her composure, unlike Oberyn. The water dance versus the night's dance. Arya is going to slide through the mountain's legs and shove the Valyrian steel cat's paw dagger through his eye. Then she'll have to give Sandor the gift of mercy. That's the Game of Thrones. Cersei loses. Now, the aftermath. Jaime's going to survive, and he's going to knight Lady Brienne, who also survives. Bren will subsequently knight Sir Pod, so Pod survives too. Bren will write Jamie's deeds in the White Book, the Book of Brothers, but again, not because Jamie's dead. I foresee Jamie surviving this story, becoming the final hand of the king. But Brienne will write Jamie's deeds into the White Book, the Book of Brothers, simply because, in the books, Jamie struggles to write with his left hand, so why not let Brienne do it? And you might be wondering, I still haven't addressed the elephant in the room. Cersei will have lost the trial by seven, but... I do not think that they sentence her to death. You know why? Because we need a payoff to the very first chapter in book one about looking the man or the woman in her eyes and hearing her last words. The man who passed the sentence should swing the sword. And if you can't bear to do that, then maybe the woman does not deserve to die. I think that's what we're going to see. There's been so much violence in this story, but in the end, they're going to pardon Cersei. They're going to confine her to an apartment in the Red Keep. The same as they did to the Dowager Queen, Alison Hightower, at the end of the Dance of the Dragons. But we're not done with Cersei. We'll get back to her. I do not believe that Jon's going to be legitimized as either a Stark or a Targaryen. He'll remain Jon Snow, foreshadowed by Grey Worm choosing to keep the name that was supposed to remind him that he was vermin. Grey Worm, wear it like armor, Jon Snow. Jon and Danny are going to marry, and she's going to have a baby. Since Samuel's now past his fear of blood, Samuel's going to deliver that baby. And I think it'd be really cool if they did that up at Winterfell, in the tower from which Bran was pushed, for reasons that I'll get into over the next few weeks. Unfortunately, it's been prophesized that Danny's going to die in childbirth, because just like the Azor High prophecy, Mir Mazdor was speaking about an S-O-N son rising the West, not an S-U-N son. Khal Drogo will be as he was, in other words, Danny will see him again, when a son rises in the West. But I've got good news. I think... Jon Snow is going to give her the last kiss, transferring his own life fire to her so that his child won't grow up without a mother, like he did. So Jon dies, but Danny lives. And so does Jorah, who will get his sword back. And he's going to help raise that child with Danny. Since Tormund's daughter, Lyanna Mormont, died, 
there's an open spot on Bear Island for them. Jorah's first wife, who looked like Danny, she hated it there. But I think Danny's going to be happy. In other words, Danny's no longer going to care about ruling the Seven Kingdoms. She's going to want to just grow up with her child. So here's what's going to happen. They're going to carry out a great council to determine the next king or queen. The great council is going to elect Sansa's queen and Tyrion as king. Davos is going to survive, but I no longer believe that he's going to be hand of the king because Jamie will be the hand without a hand. Samuel Tarly's going to end the story at the Citadel, but there will be some new rules there. Girls, like Gilly, are going to be allowed to study too. And maesters are no longer going to be denied the opportunity to build a family. Neither will the King's Guard or the Queen's Guard, so Bran and Jamie can get married and work on building a little pack of sapphire lion cubs. Bran would make a great hand of the king, since he sees many things, like Sansa's wedding night. But that sight will also come in handy in chronicling the events after King Robert's Rebellion. So I think Bran's going to join Sam down at the Citadel. And think about it. He will actually be a knight of the mind at this point. Archmaester Bran. Arya's going to survive, and she's going to become the Lady of Winterfell. With Gendry. Tala Tarly, Mir Reed, Robin Aaron, and Sir Edmure Tully, they're all going to survive too. Kyburn's going to die, but Varys is going to survive. I know, I know. Mel said she had a vision, a vision of his death. And Mel's gotten death predictions right in the past, in terms of Rob, Joffrey, Balon, and even Jon Snow in the books. But Mel's misinterpreted so many things. I think that what she saw in the flames was a figurative death. With the realm finally in good hands, with the small folk's best interest being taken care of by people like Tyrion and Sansa and Jaime, Varys is going to die in the sense that he retires from the Game of Thrones. That's pretty nice, right? On the other hand, I foresee them intentionally putting down the last dragon. Because dragons are made through blood sacrifice, from the sacrifice of children, Danny sacrificed her own child to hatch those eggs. Pretty sad. And more importantly, dragons are fire magic amplifiers, so they've got to go. That leaves us with just one more prediction. Cersei lost the trial and she was pardoned. Like I said, she'll be confined to her apartment in the Red Keep. But in what will become known as the most shocking scene ever in Game of Thrones, Cersei is going to decide to spread her wings and fly. Just like the Valonqar, Tommen.